Am I the a-hole for what I, 24 male, said to my sister, 27 female, about minding her business? This happened a while ago and I'm still getting grief for it. So I think I know your answer, but maybe some explanation will help? So, around six months ago, my fiancé, who I was with for around seven years, but we were friends before that, left me because she realized she never loved me and that I was holding her back. She was not interested in therapy. And I am not in the habit of begging someone to stay, so I helped her pack and dropped her off at a hotel, which is what she wanted and where she asked to be left. About a month ago, she called me crying in the middle of the night to say that she had made a mistake and wanted to come home. I had promptly hung up on her because I also firmly believe in the rule, don't let them tell you they don't want you, more than once. Apparently, my family didn't get the memo because for a while after that, my family, particularly the older women, had been pressuring me to hear her out and even going so far as to tell me her side of the story and how she had a breakdown and it didn't have anything to do with me. Blah, blah, blah. Don't buy it. My sister recently called me out of the blue and started talking to me about how I don't want to be the reason for anything bad, so I should call and talk to my ex. I tried to brush it off, but she kept saying things like, well, you don't want it to be your fault is all I'm saying, and stuff like that. I didn't like what she was implying, so I admit I snapped and said something not so nice. Something kind of like, maybe you should worry about your own relationship. I mean, God knows it takes all of your mental fortitude to keep your pants on. Which is bad, because her first two marriages ended due to cheating on her end. After a moment, she started crying on the phone and kept saying, I can't believe you would say that, and that's so cruel. You don't know what I went through. I replied something like, and that's why I usually stay out of it. You know, try to mind my business. Apparently, that isn't even close to the same thing. And since then, I've been getting yelled at by all the women in the family. But at least the ex talk has stopped. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You are not responsible for anything bad happening. She got exactly what she asked of you. To tell someone you've been living life with for seven years that you never loved them and they were holding you back is pretty powerful. I'm sorry you wouldn't fix that broken trust for me. I would not be surprised if she already had a backup plan, that plan being another person, and it didn't work out. Now she realizes she took her life for granted and ended a good thing. If this was your sister's first attempt at sticking her toe into the situation, I can see why she's so taken aback. But it sounds like all the women in your family are acting as a team, so she knew what she was getting herself into. Exes blamed her exes for why she cheated on them. She's also blaming Opie for ex leaving him, not the a-hole. Ex made her choice. Opie wants to move on. End of story. If there is an insinuation that the ex would harm herself, then you need to tell your sister to call 911, not you, not the a-hole. I'm of the opinion you should call every time someone tries to use that line to manipulate you, even if you know they'd never do it. Hopefully, getting the cops involved enough times will make them cut that nonsense out. I can just imagine the sister spluttering over the line if Opie was like, Wait, really? I'm gonna call the cops because I'm afraid she'll hurt herself. It's effective. Had a friend keep someone on the phone while their mom called the police in another state? Because if it is real, they need help. If it's manipulative, then they made their bed. Yep, my ex did this to me, in writing, the day before a divorce proceeding. I responded with a link to a mental health line, told her she should call them if she felt like hurting herself, and called her sister and relayed it, and said, I'm done with it. It's on you. I'm not getting involved. Printed out the transcript and had it for the judge to see. Ex had a restraining order out against her for assaulting me and we made a nice record of her manipulation on the record in court. Sadly, it didn't move the judge in the least, but I did get a formal, I was only doing it for attention, and a good, don't do it again or I will move for full custody of the children. It was a regular part of our interaction for many years. Been over a year now and not a peep. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not moving on fast enough for my late fiancé? I, 27 female, have twins, 3 male and 3 female. For my late fiancé, I'll call him Noah. Noah and I met when we were 16 and got engaged when we were about 24. And shortly after, we found out that I was pregnant. 
However, Noah died in a car accident not too long after. This wrecked me and both of our families, since we had been together for so long, and they had watched us grow up together. Noah was his mom's only child, and she had him at a young age, so they were very close. The whole family helped raise Noah when he was young, and when Noah and I started dating, we always had our weekly dinners with just the three of us. His mom and I became really close, and even closer after Noah's death. Her and I continued those weekly dinners, and I included the twins when they came along. My current boyfriend of 10 months, I'll call him Rick, has recently told me that he doesn't like how close I am with Noah's mom. He doesn't like our weekly dinners and thinks that only the twins should go. He doesn't like that I still have pictures of Noah and I in my house. Rick doesn't live with me and the twins, just spends nights. And doesn't want me going on vacation with Noah's mom and her family. I've been going on vacation with Noah's mom and her family since I was 16, and I continued to go even after Noah's death, with the twins. It never really came across my mind to stop going, because I love Noah's mom, and the twins love spending a week at a beach with her grandmother and the rest of the family. I told him that the pictures stay, because he doesn't live here, and the twins love looking at the pictures of their dad. Then I told him that it's too late to back out of the vacation, and that I enjoy spending time with Noah and his family. He then told me that I'm not a part of Noah's family, so I have no reason to go, and that I'll never be part of the family because Noah and I never married. I was taken aback by this, and told him to get out. I called my parents and told them what happened, and to my surprise, they agreed with him. They believe that I need to start pulling away from Noah's family, because again, I'm not a part of it, and I never will be. They said that I don't need to be rude to them or anything, but I shouldn't be going on vacations having dinners with his mom, or going to family gatherings, and that I need to start a new chapter of my life, one where Noah and his family aren't in it, because I'm taking too long to move on from Noah. Then Rick texted me, saying to contact him when I'm actually ready to be in a relationship with someone who isn't Noah. I really don't know what to make of this. I thought I moved on enough. I know that Noah and I will never be married, and I've accepted that. I just still see his mom as a mother figure because I've known her for so long and the twins love her. She was one of the only people who knew how I felt when Noah died and I don't know what I would do without her. Am I the a-hole? I'm not a part of Noah's family. Yes, you are. Your mother to the grandchildren of her dead son. Pretty much family in my book. Not the a-hole. Thank you. I've always viewed them as my family. But this whole situation had me second-guessing that. They will always be family, Opie. At least as long as you allow them to be part of the twins' lives. They will always be present and will interact with you and the children. Is there any reason why your parents resent them so much they want to make you cut contact with your children's family? How would they feel if they were the family being kicked out of your twins' life? I guess they won't care because they are not family and will never be. Rick is a jealous, controlling a-hole. Please, be careful when he is around your kids and what he tells them. Only 10 months dating and demands you to cut contact with family is a big red flag, but whatever. Not the a-hole OP. But please, for your children, don't deprive them of a healthy relationship with people who knew their dad and loves them a lot. You and Noah would still be together except this horrible tragedy. Not the a-hole and I would move on from Rick. Thank you. I don't think I'll be contacting Rick anytime soon. Don't contact him ever again. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not waking up my boyfriend for work in time, even though I could? My 29 female boyfriend, 35 male, has been living with me since he landed his first engineering job two months ago. I have been the one to wake him up several times when I notice he's sleeping in. He has his first alarm at 7, then one at 7.10. He has to leave at 7.45 max if he wants to get to his workplace by 8 a.m. I work from home. I'm a freelancer, so I have no need to wake up that early. On the times I realized he hasn't moved from bed and it's past 7.30, he would really get mad when I woke him up, yelling, Why didn't you wake me up sooner? Today I woke up at 7 a.m. by his alarm clock as we sleep together. He woke up turned it off and went back to sleep like he usually does until the 710 alarm. Then he turned off the 710 alarm and went back to sleep again. 
I wasn't really paying attention to the time, but I was using my phone as some clients were texting me already. I kept looking at my boyfriend from time to time, and he would open his eyes at me, smile and nod, then close his eyes again. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I checked the time, and it was already 7.37. I look at him calmly, he smiles, and I ask, do you know what time it is? To which he answered, probably 7.25 or so. Then he took his phone and saw it was 7.37, and rushed off to the bathroom, slamming the door. As he was putting his clothes on, he was arguing, it's an a-hole move of yours to not tell me what time earlier. Because of that, I'm going to be late, and will leave without even brushing my teeth. I told him that I didn't mean to make him angry, but that being on time for his work isn't my responsibility. To which he said, if you are awake and capable of helping out, but you decide not to, then you are an a-hole. I get that we are a couple and should help each other, and he's the one paying for all the food and half the bills, so the last thing I want is for him to lose his job because of tardiness. I was not troubled about being an a-hole until the moment he retaliated back at me in a pretty nasty way. Before leaving for work in a rush, he blew his nose on my favorite towel, leaving boogers on it, and said, You have that white towel on a bathroom to make it look pretty, right? He's in general a very good partner, so I was appalled that he would retaliate like that, which made me rethink if I should just keep waking him up if he sleeps in, as I'm already awake and I'm capable of doing it. Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. He is an adult and is capable of getting out of bed on time. I would tell him if he ever retaliates in such a disgusting manner again that he will be packing his bags and leaving. That is not acceptable behavior under any circumstances. He is punishing you for his inability to get himself up on time. This type of abusive behavior will escalate. He is teaching you that you will be very sorry if you don't do what he wants. This is definitely a hill I would die on. I ain't nobody's mama. If you can't manage to hold down a job without me holding your hand, we'd be done. Not the a-hole. He's snapping at you and blaming you for his childish behavior. You didn't sign up to be his mommy. When your alarm goes off, you get up. You don't put the burden of waking you up on your partner. Boyfriend is an a-hole. I have a really hard time getting up in the morning, so I also have to set multiple alarms. But I'd never get mad at someone for waking me up too late, because that's my fault. I'd be happy they didn't let me sleep in any later. Is he 35 or 12? Because he sounds like a child. I just leave him sleeping until he wakes up. If he wants to get fired, that's his choice. There's a morning I hate my alarm, but get my butt out of bed anyway, because I'm an adult and I have to work. Even my six-year-old wouldn't retaliate this way. He has no respect for her. Last story. Am I the a-hole for letting my pregnant fiancé think I'm cheating on her? My fiancé Jen is insecure right now, given that she's 32 weeks pregnant. I still think she's beautiful no matter what, but telling her that makes no difference. Now, for the past six years, we have been basically inseparable. I actually enjoy her company. To a point of me not really enjoying going out without her. She's fun, and she makes my night way better by having her around. We also are very open with communication and we aren't blind, so we will 100% tell each other when we find someone else attractive. Well, given this detail, I may have messed up a bit, because I told Jen that I thought my buddy's girlfriend was gorgeous and had nice hips. That is not an uncommon comment for the record. It was merely bad timing because she is pregnant and insecure. I shouldn't have said anything, but again we have always talked like this to each other, so I just wasn't thinking. I mean, just two months ago, she pointed out some very attractive man and said he has arms that could toss her around a bedroom, lol. Neither of us act on anything like this. It's all talk and sometimes leads to extra spicy time. That's all. But anyways, I made a comment about my buddy's girlfriend and she agreed with me at first, but it soon fell apart. See, I go to my buddy's house quite often and she's always invited, but she's been declining because of being uncomfortable. The baby is on her sciatic nerve, or saying she doesn't want to really be around people because she feels gross. But she did go with me two days ago, and I guess I let my eyes wander a bit and she noticed, which I didn't. She asked me to bring her home and was being super quiet, and when I get it out of her, she say, you told me she's gorgeous and has nice hips. And then you guys eyeing each other in front of me. 
I asked what she was talking about, and she openly said, Are you sleeping with her? Because you are there a lot. So I said, Don't be silly. Of course not. I drop her off. She tells me to go have fun, so I go back. When I get home, she was in bed and distant. I ask what's wrong, and she said, You just left me here thinking you are cheating, and go back to hang out with her with zero qualms. She wasn't there when I got back. I said, You told me to go back and have fun, babe. I didn't realize you were serious. She says, As if you didn't realize I was serious, and turns to go to bed. Now I'm feeling incredibly stupid, but I don't even know what to say to her. It's tense in my house. Am I the a-hole? I'm gonna give you a live pro tip from someone who's been married for 15 years. When she says, do what you want to do or go have fun, it's not giving permission. It's a dare. Partner, go have fun. Narrator, sensing danger. The man absolutely does not go and have fun. It was indeed a trap. One that only the most unwary would fall into. My dude, if your wife's upset, prioritize making her not upset. Especially when she's pregnant with your child. I drop her off. She tells me to go have fun, so I go back there. When I got home, she was in bed, distant. I said, you told me to go back and have fun, babe. I didn't realize you were serious. Are you serious right now? I truly can't tell. She's not mad at you because she's pregnant and insecure. She's both of those things right now, but that's not why she's mad. She's mad because she was upset, and instead of trying to make things better, you went back and prioritized your own fun. She told you to leave because her presence made her upset, but your absence would make her more upset. Learn these things. You're going to be a dad, so prioritize your family. You're the a-hole. Yeah, Opie. I would explain to her that you posted here and definitely learned some perspective. That you love her a bunch and you were being super dense and a moron. You two seem solid and comfortable with each other. So once she sees that you know your thought process was stupid, this would be salvageable. You're the a 